Hello and welcome back to my channel, Little Farm Homestead. My name is Amber. Um, if you're new here, I am just starting, uh, well, we've got our spring garden in and I'm trying to do like a weekly or something update of how the garden is doing. So I'm fixing to do a little bit of a garden tour. Um, and I'm trying to maintain that. And I'm gonna walk around in a few areas that we haven't gone over before to um, show different parts of the garden and what's in it. Like I don't think I've ever shown um, our onions and garlic and things like that. And our chickens are right next to the garden so you'll see those too. Um, our meat chickens are coming on Tuesday or Wednesday this week, so that will be a nice little addition. And we use, we're gonna put them, that building right there is our goat barn, and right now we don't have any goats in it, so we're going to uh, change one of the bays for the meat chickens, and that's where we'll um, store them for now. And so let's go ahead and, and do the garden. So the last time I came out to show you guys the garden situation, there's been a couple of changes. So we added, I don't remember if we had already put down the cardboard in this walking path here. I know we already had the, um, the watering lines, all the drip lines, but in this entrance and the entrance on the other side, we put cardboard just to um, keep one for a weed barrier, but also when it's really wet out and it's rainy, these uh, walk paths get really muddy and all through here. We have sunflowers growing on these entrance portions. Um, in this area, this little patch right here, we did some watermelons. Um, so those will be growing up. And we also did some flowers. We did snapdragons and um, some other flowers, I can't remember. But those will be popping up soon. We just planted those recently. So in the walkways, we did some uh, mulch in the walkways just to kind of cut down on the, um, the weeds for one. And also, just like I said, with the mud, and making the walking through a little bit easier. So we've mulched. Um, another thing we're going to be adding is, you see the weed barrier here with the landscape fabric. We'll be adding more of that in. We'll be putting that um, along. Um, we probably won't do this row because there's a lot of lettuces growing here and a lot of them are sewn really closely to get um, like the baby greens and whatnot. So we probably won't put it here because right in this area, there's a lot of really closely sewn lettuces all the way down. We've got some dill growing up here and we've got more lettuces now. These are more headed, so that's why it's um, got the fabric on it. So they'll be individualized. On this row, we have peas. I mean, not peas, beans all the way down, green beans. Um, this here on the ends of both of these two rows, the last uh, four plants on each row, that's sunflowers. So there's sunflowers there. And then coming along this row here, there's three or four brassicas growing right there. Um, I think those are all broccolis. And then all the way down here, we just have um, some extra tomatoes that we planted that we had more than we could put in the first two rows, um, which are also tomatoes. So this is kind of like the overflow row. This was originally going to all be brassicas down here, but um, they just did not do well. Um, they were completely eaten by, I don't know if it was birds or rabbits or bugs or whatever, they didn't make it. So we just put in our overflow tomatoes. It worked out, it's fine, and it'll be great. Um, here, where the beans were, in this patch here, there was a variety of beans 
Um, I can't remember which one. I have everything documented on our garden map. So we'll have to look and see what we planted here. I want to say they were contender beans, which is exactly what's planted there, but these just didn't work out. So I put in new beans uh, about two days ago. So those will be coming up in the next few days. Uh, beans typically grow pretty fast. These are all butter crunch lettuce heads. And this is where our peppers start. All of this row here, all the way down, and all the way up the second row are all peppers. The last row, that's all of our cucumber, or, or not cucumber, that's all yellow squash, and then the last row is all zucchini. Um, Luke, my oldest son, added these cute little sunflower solar lights and we have two on the entrance on this end and two on the entrance on the other end which he thought was so fun and I really like that. He spends a lot of time out here with me with his little excavator. Um, we even have some growth on our cucumbers. So excited to see little baby cucumbers popping up. This is how we're going to be trellising our cucumbers. Um, we have cattle panels that we are putting up and we're going to actually do the entire row all the way down. Um, so that'll be really nice. It's one reason why I didn't continue the row in. It only went too deep, whereas the other side goes three deep is because I knew we would be having cattle panels all the way down. Um, so I decided to leave that open and just have really wide lanes on these two so that we could access um, the beans easily and the tomatoes easily without having a narrow path. And so it's really wide all the way down on either side. And um, I did that also on the aisle with the lettuce in between the beans and the lettuce, just so it would be easy to navigate um, those areas. Another really fun thing that we planted on the tail end down here is next to the lettuce, we have some cantaloupe planted and some watermelon planted. Now, uh, right now, this section is shaded, but it is in the morning right now. It's uh, just, a it's actually just afternoon. So it's, we're going into the second half of the day. The entire afternoon, this whole section is going to be lit up. So it's going to have several hours of full sun. It's only in the morning that this area is shaded. And so I feel just fine having watermelon and cantaloupe in that area. This is Texas. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very sunny. The entire garden is going to get plenty of sun. So we have some more landscape fabric that we're going to be putting on a few of the additional aisles. I want to put some on the rest of the peppers there. I want to do the entire row of peppers that is uncovered all the way down. I won't cover the rows with the squash and zucchini because it is going to bush so much that not much of the row is going to be seen anyway so there's no point they'll choke out their own weeds which is fine let them have at it um the peppers won't so i want to have those fully covered on all the way down and another thing i'll probably cover are the tomatoes here and I have thought about doing the um, rest of the cucumbers, which start from here and come down. They're pretty heavily mulched here in the middle. And then they have the fabric there. Um, so I may just go ahead and do from here down. But yeah, that's where we're at now. I'm going to cover the tomatoes and the two rows of peppers fully in landscape fabric. And then I will likely do the cucumbers here, especially since they're going to be trellised vertically. They won't cover much of their own um, weeds to choke anything out. So they will have that issue and I want to 
uh, stem as much of that growth as possible with the fabric. And that's where we're at. We do have various flowers planted. We have a lot of marigolds, some zinnias, um, different things to help with pests. Um, I also planted quite a bit of, of basil throughout the tomatoes and peppers. Um, and you'll see some of those planted here and here. Um, that, that's a mammoth basil that's coming up there. Um, there's another plant there, but they're kind of scattered throughout all of the peppers and tomatoes to kind of help with pests and, you know, tomatoes and basil go so well together that I think it'll be a wonderful little addition. This one is getting eaten quite a bit by pests already. But that is our second spring garden tour as of now. And we're really happy with how this is coming along. I'll go ahead and show you okay, the so other area. This is our compost bucket. We throw a bunch of our compost in here just to kind of break things down. We give a lot of stuff to the chickens as well. This is um, their big run here and it goes all the way back to their barn back there. Over here we have some shallots, garlic, and a lot of onions that we've planted. This is the first time we have planted onions and garlic in this, it's a little raised bed. And we had a lot of clover in this. Um, a lot of this um, compost manure came from our barn where the cows are over this is probably a couple of years old um, compost but it did have a lot of seed from the pasture which had a lot of clover and we have a lot of clover in it the only place that doesn't is here which we heavily mulched with um, leaves it's like a bunch of, of just like leaves and pine needles and so on from um, just our own our own property. Over here we have um, dill and cilantro and this is all the cilantro is seeded out and it's going to repopulate itself which has already started um, doing that and the dill is likewise populating. So we're going to have quite a bit growing here in this bed which has been recently uncovered. I had it fully covered um, most of the late winter to remove all of the weeds because it also had a lot of um, clover, but it's beautiful soil now. And in here is several herbs. We have um, rosemary, no, not rosemary. We have thyme, oregano, basil, and um, sage all growing in here in rows all the way down from highest to lowest um, so that those will all grow up there it'll just be a nice little herb bed so that'll be really um, helpful with not only you know flavoring for food but also medicinal purposes and I also have more dill growing in the garden so this will be going to seed, or it already is seeding out, which is nice. We'll have some growing here, some growing in the garden. Cilantro does not do well in the summer months. In Texas, all of this will bolt and die back, but it will come back next year. It always does. What you think, Jacob? Come here. Okay. Um, huh? Careful. Watch your step. What is it? Easy. Watch your step. Come on. Let's go. No, no, no. Leave that down. There you go. Let's walk over here to the peppers. I gotta fix this. Come here. You can do it. Watch your step. 
Step over it. Lift your foot up higher. You can do it. Lift your foot up higher. Lift it up. There you go. You got it. Yeah. That is our second tour of the garden. And um, this does not include the kids' garden, which we have in the front of the house. Um, we also have some items in the greenhouse, which is just kind of like extras, some herbs, some um, lettuces, some radishes, things like that, that didn't really fit out here. And we have um, a lot of flowers planted in the front and in our green stalks for pollinators. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is where our main food source is. Right back here is um, further out and that area is where we're going to be planting corn for the animals, not really for us. We do have an area on some of our other property pasture land um, on the greater part of the farm where we do sweet corn for us. But this is more of like, I guess, our immediate use preservation kitchen garden type of thing. So the rest of it is pretty much just for the animals and things like that. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you so much. Please like and subscribe to help us grow the channel. We would really appreciate it. And we hope you come by again and see how the garden grows throughout the season.